Woo! Day 55. It is a good day. It's a sad day in one respect, and it's the last day that I get to use Zen, but pretty much um, a happy day. That, in the long term, that's a happy day as well. But the what a wild start to the day. Um, woke up this morning, and basically I've been working for, a, not working the whole time, but over the course of the last five years, I've been working on and off on this novel. I wrote it originally when I was in Colorado, just like ho hopelessly addicted to opiate painkillers during COVID lockdown. Um, and basically had this mushroom trip where I realized that I wanted to, uh, that I, I wanted to write stories that I thought it would be a valuable use of my time. And so I, started writing a fiction novel. And my method for doing so is I would save all my oxycodone that I was prescribed. I'd just take a little bit throughout the day. And then I would take like a bolus dose of like 100 to 180 milligrams of oxy, just get super faded, wait for Kelsey to, you know, write kind of at the end of the evening, right before Kelsey would go to bed. And then I would just stay up all night writing, sometimes till five or 6 a.m wrote this novel, a bit chaotic, a little bit, uh, yeah, you know, it wasn't, uh, it definitely wasn't complete by any stretch of the imagination, and I wrote it all on paper, which I won't mistake, make that mistake again, because, yeah, that's, I have terrible handwriting, and it's fucking impossible to, tra it's terrible to try to transcribe um, onto a computer screen. Anyways, I digress. Um, and so novel was chaotic, shelved it for uh, a long time, thought about it a lot, thought about how to tie the story together and everything, but it just d didn't have, well, I'll go on to the, the next part first. And so I rewrite the entire novel uh, years later, 2022, probably, something like that, and um, rewrite it in a couple of months, like sometimes like 12, sometimes 17 hours a day, um, a couple of the days and just write this whole novel out and there was no ending. I couldn't figure out the ending. The reason I couldn't figure out the ending is because there was no real character arc. I didn't give the protagonist like a real transformational character arc to go through. He had no juice, oomph and sauce. And basically um, this morning I stood and it also had some other really key missing elements that it, it needed some glue to pull it all together and make it have something real that mattered at all. And rather than just being a fun adventure story, I was really proud of like the world that I built and everything. I th at least think it was interesting and fun, but it didn't have, you know, the core of what makes a good story, um, which is the character arc and, you know, the uh, the progress the you know the progression of an adventure. Anyways, um, this morning I stood in my standing frame. I was just doing my normal everyday journaling, and, you know, just basic stuff. Not even thinking about anything in particular, really. And I, I had a cup of tea, a nice cup of um, white tea, and I was just incepted with this idea and the interesting part of this is the synchronicity that i'm about to explain that came along after the idea and so basically when i was at shambhala i got to connect with a bunch of a bunch of old friends some newer friends just a ton of amazing people and me and one of my old friends that i've been disconnected with for years this fucking amazing girl named kayla she and I just had like this electric reconnection and it was special and amazing in every way. So happy to have her back in my life. She's been from the moment I saw her again till now, just been an immense, like huge positive influence on me. And this morning I had texted her right before I did include this part of the thing. I had texted her right before I got in my standing frame, just like a basic text. I think I had just gotten her number from Instagram was saying like, hey, it's me. Um, and 
then I got incepted with this crazy character idea and also like the glue that would pull the whole story together, give it meaning, shape the ending. I, the whole thing came together. I ferociously outlined the whole novel again so I can go through with the outline and rewrite everything into it that I need to. I literally wrote for like an hour and 20 minutes straight and it was just awesome. I was just like, this idea just beamed out of nowhere onto me and part of the idea, fundamental part of the idea has to do with like souls recycling through time and it was just so weird. As soon as I got off the standing frame, I had a text from Galen. She sent me a book that like that is the topic of the entire book is like how souls move through time. So immediately ordered it. We started texting each other and had so much to say. We had to get on a phone call and had an amazing conversation for a few hours and did all the catching up that we couldn't do while we're at a music festival around, oops, no battery, um, around, you know, tons of other people that we wanted to socialize with as well. And I've met, I don't think I've ever been more grateful to connect with reconnect with a person in my life. She's just an angel sent from heaven. And I couldn't be more excited to, you know, re get to know her and get to know her new husband. Cause it's hard out here in the world, meeting people and finding people that you really connect with and are on the same level as you that want to relentlessly pursue their truth. I don't know if you can hear that. There's the weirdest noise happening right now. Um, hopefully you can. Look at your voice isolation because I'm telling you it's like a mosquito is inside my dashboard. Well, totally lost my turn of thought there. Um, oh, yikes. It just might be gone. The mosquito noise happened and there's like a storm on the horizon. We'll show you the storm while I try to regather. My thoughts, oh, it's back. My thoughts are back. Um, that's right. So it's really hard to find people that just want to relentless, relentlessly pursue their personal truth and growth and development and move forward in life and not just ignore everything and, you know, trudge along. And I think that's such a mistake. I think everyone had almost, if nothing else, the time of your death, you have a moment of reckoning where you get to see your truth and the, the hell, the definition of hell is that moment of reckoning being the moment that you die. You get supposedly get, you know, a massive dose of DMT and, you know, your life flashes before your eyes and you have to, you know, confront the, uh, the full and total truth of whether or not this journey on the earth was a success or if you didn't live the life that you were meant to live. And so it's super awesome when you get, when I get or you get or anyone gets to, you know, that has that mindset, gets to connect with other people that have, you know, that same idea that this is a gift worth cherishing and worth, you know, working your ass off to figure it out and make the absolute most of it because it can be wasted so easily. Time just flies by. It fucking burns by real quick and it goes even faster, I think, when you are, you know, living in your own simulation of what's happening rather than, I don't know, exactly where I'm going going with this. I'm just saying super grateful um, to incorporate more and more beautiful people um, into my life. That goes for everyone that I was with at Shambhala. I just feel like I hit an absolute lottery of the group of people that I got to be surrounded with. Absolutely everyone made a huge impression on me and I just, you know, I, it was the first time in my entire life where I really realized that we're, 
I've known this intuitively before. I've always known this. Oh. That we're all the the same the same. We're all from the same thing. We're all the same at our core. We're all family. We're all connected. We are really one big human family um, and tribe if we would just put aside the minimal differences and look at the things that are the same it's it's always more in common than than different and there's obviously extremes to the spectrum but you know for the most part we are all just one big tribe or family living together and it, the people that I was with really showed me that and it was fucking beautiful but i have to call my grandmother so this is going to be a shorter video even though i'm pumped and would love to keep filming and didn't do much filming today just because i was locked in on this i didn't do any work today i went to work but i did nothing um productive at work whatsoever i was locked in on an idea that Kayla had to try to uh, raise some money for spinal cord for psychedelic research and spinal cord injury uh, and she asked me to write some stuff about it so I wrote that for a bunch of day worked on book outline stuff and just pretty much did anything other than try to sell insurance I just couldn't I was firing on too many cylinders too many creative cylinders and you got to take advantage of those moments because they don't last forever it was so disappointing towards the end of the day when i kind of just burn out on writing and stuff and i just wanted that magic to keep happening i was trying to force it and i was just like before when that would happen i would kind of lose the the mojo i would almost i didn't even real i did not realize this today but when that would happen i'd be like Maybe I was. Maybe maybe this. I would start second guessing the project as a whole. I'd start second guessing the idea or whatever, um, rather than just being like, "Oh, look, I lost. I worked on this for three hours. I lost momentum, and I don't fucking feel like doing it anymore." I'll get back to it another time. I would like lose faith in it a little bit, which is crazy. But I realized that I was had that narrative in my head at the end. I was like second guessing things and like didn't have like before it was coming out so easy and so truthful and so uh well written and then all of a sudden it was kind of just like being forced and then i didn't have it at all and i was like letting that deter me completely i was getting pessimistic about it i was like that means, no you're just tired you're just burnt out you don't want to do this anymore you've done it for three hours so put it down wait for that surge of energy some other time and hop back into it. It's crazy how uh, it took me, you know, 31 years or whatever, however old I am, years to just like chill enough to just have basic insights like that into uh, my behavior and my thought patterns. But that's it, that's all. I'm gonna call uh, my beautiful grandmother and grandfather and three-way my niece in there so we can all chit chat and hang out i love you as always i hope this finds you well or if it doesn't find you well i hope it finds you with a deep deep desire to become well because uh, you know there's there's times in all of our lives there's certainly been a lot of time in my life where I was in a hole and I could not see the fucking light. And I just kept climbing upwards, slipping down. Sometimes I fell all the way back to the bottom and just dug it a bunch deeper. But anyways, that's it. Signing out, day 55. Day 56 is my first sin-free day. So I'm gonna be a grumpy fucking asshole tomorrow. I'm not gonna be a grumpy asshole tomorrow. That's what I'm telling myself, but evidence proves otherwise anyways love you and leave you goodbye this is a moment that has to be captured the final zen it is technically day 56 right now but it's like midnight and i haven't gone to bed yet so 
I'm just counting it as day 55 because I have a single Zin left. And uh, yeah, there's no way I, I, I would have to like flush this down a toilet, which I just don't care to do because I want it to not like if this was anywhere in the house tomorrow, I would consume it. There's no way I could resist. I'm going to have a, I'm going to be a very, very grumpy boy tomorrow. Um, I'm going to try to conceal that from Kelsey, but I'm definitely going to lose my temper unnecessarily about something super stupid, at least once or twice a video not uploading or, you know, something happening. Some minor technical difficulty on the computer will lead to me probably threatening to smash my computer and throwing a whole little tantrum. I don't know what happens when I uh, quit nicotine for like three days, but I just snap completely. I have no control over it. It's against my will. I don't care what anyone says. It just happens. It's complete derailment of neural pathways from normal life to filled with bitter hatred and rage. Um, it only happens for like three days, maybe to a little extent after that, um, but definitely for like a full 72 hour, I just become a grumpy dickbag asshole. Normally I try to time um, my quitting Zen or quitting nicotine with Kelsey working for like three days. Her nursing schedule, like 12 hours a day, where she just comes home and passes out, doesn't have to see me. But we're actually spending a bunch of time together in the next few days. We're going on a date night tomorrow night, which I'm stoked about. And then we are doing something on Saturday. Yard work, I guess. We're gonna be together. We're gonna be hanging out. And then on Sunday, we're going to an adaptive surfing event all day. And it's an hour and a half drive. So I'm going to really try to rein it in and not be a fucking dick for no reason. And just cause um, unnecessary, you know, annoyance and frustration in my loved ones. But we'll see. All right. Day... 56. Hard to say, hard to report on. What would you say? How would you say that I did with quitting Zen, Kels? <laughs> better, better than past instances. <laughs> you can't compare yourself to others. You can only pay, compare yourself to your previous self. And I've done better. I was filled with mostly hate and rage for the vast majority of the day. I have no idea why. The only times that I felt really good was when I was working out, when you fed me, when I was eating, and during the sauna, and like immediately after the sauna. I did not feel, no, I wasn't. I was, I, well, I mean, when I was like literally getting grassed and cupped and like stretched without doing any of the work, but like when I was doing any work myself, I was like, there was some rage. Rage happening. I don't know why. I don't know why it happens, but the beautiful, voluptuous, look how gorgeous she looks. Voluptuous. Jesus, fuck. Girl and I are going out on a date night, which we don't rarely do, but we rarely end up doing it without dragging someone with us. So it's gonna be nice. Yeah. We're gonna go to Brazilian Steakhouse. And then we're gonna go watch Inside Out 2. We're going to the other side of Orlando where we used to live because we like that theater more than the one that's right by our house because it has- Why this new steakhouse though? Brazilian steakhouse. What is? The theater's right over there. Yeah, I know. That's well, why I chose that Brazilian steakhouse. Yeah, exactly. But we chose it because we like that theater. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's got reclining. Well, we would have went to Brazilian seats. Steakhouse regardless. Yeah, we were going to Brazilian Steakhouse. They're all over there anyways. Yeah. So. It was, it, it is written. It was fate. It's destiny. This is what God wanted us to do today. Uh, or the universe or Mother Earth, depending on, you know, or Shiva or whatever the Hindu God is. Whatever uh, 
deity entity you believe in is guiding us today anyways uh yeah so might report a little bit more later but the nicotine thing is super hard nicotine withdrawals are real especially i was doing 60 to probably like on a high day like a hundred plus milligram like a hundred milligrams of nicotine throughout the day and i feel i the weird the difference between this time quitting nicotine and every other time that i've quit uh before whether it was chew or cigarettes or these pouches or vape this time i actually don't care don't want it i, I really don't want it to be a part of my life i can feel that it's a you know a net negative in every way other than like it's almost like it's the period at the end of a sentence when i have thoughts and the kind of run out of things to do or things to think about and hit like an empty space i think is it i think you know pull out naked and play and like it, it, it's almost like the period on the end of a sentence in my thoughts i don't know if that makes any sense but that's how it feels to me that's the times throughout the day i'm i have to run this red light there's i can't we can't stop here that's insane there's nothing there was no one at risk it wasn't uh it wasn't a situation where there was any other cars involved it had to be done um i'm too impatient if i had zin would have been safer for everyone but <laughs> that's how my mind works i've just just i've justified why i should be able to have a zin today so many times a million different crazy workaround reasons why i should I should just have one just to do one more you know it's just one more day start tomorrow but uh i know i've had battle or you know fought off and overcome enough addictions to know it's always today you just choose the day cut the uh cut the ties and move on but anyways gonna enjoy the ride with the girl and bid you most likely farewell for today but we shall see all all right day number 57 right I'm pretty sure it's 57 yeah it is uh day number 56 date was dicey everything was dicey i was an asshole it happens the nicotine uh i basically have lost two days uh of my life to this nicotine addiction i'm just gonna move you right over here so i can uh this nicotine addiction quitting this nicotine because uh yesterday i was just grumpy and you know kind of just a a douche overall and then today i just was super depressed i just didn't feel like doing anything and i still did a, you know i still did a bunch of yard work and a bunch of i uh, did, did a sauna and everything slept in super late though slept in really late and yeah just didn't uh i was just a real bitch all day just a huge huge pussy but i'm feeling normal almost back to normal now it's like 6 30 maybe seven o'clock at night i'm gonna make some alaskan sable fish on a bed like it's kind of served on a bed of uh coconut rice with a like a mediterranean salad thing to go along with it so i'm cutting up these uh bell peppers so that should be bomb i have uh, allowed myself to have a little cheat of like a couple um like a couple, I don't know, organic, like, it's like an organic version of Almond Joy, like dark chocolate with like some coconut filling in there. And then I'm having a little Chianti, a little glass of wine. Just because, uh, yeah, I'm a bitch. I'm, I, I need vices. And quitting nicotine was making me super grumpy. And I just wanted, I wanted something to just occupy that space in my mind, that substance needing space and uh so yeah a glass of wine did it really well an energy drink i don't know what it is just something needs something i'm gonna work extremely hard this time to not just you know take one addiction and replace it with another but i actually won't um i actually don't ever have a problem with that i just have a two or three day period of time where i'm a complete 
pussy about quitting nicotine. It could just be the quantity and amount of time that I've done it, you know, 13, 14 years of 15, maybe, yeah, maybe like 16 plus years of pretty consistent nicotine use and also just using it in really, really high dosages, you know, chewing a couple cans of chewing tobacco every single day when I did, um, when I did chew tobacco and then with the Zin, it's just nonstop. I basically wake up and then just recycle Zins in my mouth all day long. I actually have no idea. I've never counted or even really thought about how many milligrams I'm doing a day until I said between 60 and 100. And that is probably pretty accurate, like between 10 and 15 of those little pouches per day. But yeah, it's a, that's a, that's an unnecessary amount of nicotine to be consuming and it the exact so the conviction to like now i don't when i think about it i just, i do think about like the act of putting one in but i have no positive association to it whatsoever the exact same thing happened to me when i quit uh opiates after i was heavily addicted to them like eight nine months post my original injury um I used all, I was prescribed a certain amount. I used all of them in way less time than, you know, the one month that I was supposed to. And the doctors totally saw what, you know, what I was doing and were just like, no, fuck you, you don't get any more. So I was forced to go through withdrawals. As soon as I saw the withdrawals and what they were doing to me, I just immediately decided to never do opiates again. And yeah, haven't done them habitually. Anyway, I've had like one off doses every now and then um, at doctor or hospital visits and stuff. But yeah, we'll never do them as like a part of my pain regimen ever again. And that was because I decided, like when I went through those withdrawals and saw what it did to my body, I was like, there's no fucking way I'm ingesting anything that makes me this dependent on it. Sorry, I can't lean my phone up properly. I'm just trying to throw my compost away. Uh, and the same thing with nicotine. I mean, I really have been totally depressed this last two days. I haven't fucking gotten anything done. I just don't give a shit about anything. I've instantly fired up into anger for absolutely no reason. The smallest things happen. And I'm just like, I am just filled with the blinding, like intense rage about anything. Um, and yeah, the, I mean, it's completely uncharacteristic. I mean, not for my whole life, but for the last few weeks. So the only answer is that it's the nicotine causing it. And I just don't want any substance or thing to have control of my mind and body like that. It can't be healthy. It can't be optimal. That's for damn sure. So... But that's basically it. I will give you a view of this amazing Sablefish masterpiece that I am about to create. But other than that, just honestly took basically these two days off. But tomorrow is going to be sick. Going out to uh, my friend Chris's thing that he's putting together right here. I think I've got... A cool, wait, that's not what I want to grab. I think I've got a sweet sticker here. Adaptive Surfing Academy of Florida. My buddy Chris Ray's just started, uh, it's basically the inaugural starting of this company or program or his deal for basically teaching adaptive surfers how to surf starts tomorrow so we're gonna go out there's gonna be like 15 uh i think there's gonna be like 15 athletes who are learning to surf and then a few of us who he's already uh taught to surf and who surfs with him regularly i think we're all gonna be out there i don't know exactly what um the structure of it and everything is but basically a bunch of people in wheelchairs or with disabilities of some description or another another are all gathering at the beach and Chris is going to teach a bunch of them to surf. So pumped about that. And I'll be back to firing on uh, all cylinders 
you're certainly after a few hours in the ocean and 72 hours off nicotine, I'll be ready to rock and good to go. I'm not sure how uh, long like some of this little slump's gonna last, but I have to imagine it's gonna be like every other thing that I've ever um, got unaddicted to. And it's like a couple days of being shitty and then just a huge surge of awesomeness in every single way, mental health, mental clarity, just excitement and zest for life. As soon as your brain gets off of a substance, it doesn't take long for it to like kick into, you know, full gear and get stoked. So anyways, I'm going to make my sable fish. I will see you tomorrow. Well, you'll see the sable fish. In the, I'll see you in a second. I'll see you in a second. I'll see you in a second. This isn't goodbye. All right. As promised, promised sable fish with Mediterranean vegetables incoming. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Look at that perfection. Alaskan sable fish with a bunch of Mediterranean vegetables. I mean, come on. How lucky are we in this world? Come on. Come on. Does it get better than this? Does it get better than this, Kells? Phone eats first, right? Oh my gosh, look at that pile. Presentation could leave a little bit to be desired, but this is gonna be amazing. Super stoked, end of day 57, uh, and hopefully the end of my nicotine-induced depression and bitchness, but we'll see. Tomorrow's a new day. All right, day 58. I fucked up yesterday. Look, I have leftover pull-ups. I didn't finish. I'm starting in a deficit, but I'm going to get them knocked out. Kelsey and I, there she is, are headed to the first ever Adaptive Surfing Academy of Florida event. It's 7.30, so I am a little bit late already because I should be literally leaving right this second from a bust out five pull-ups so the surfboard in the car and gtfo this piggy look at it look how perfect she is little beauty bulldog <laughs> I lost three days, lost three days of productivity and actual, you know, pushing forward on like any of the goals that I've talked about on this channel, purely because of nicotine withdrawals. I don't want to admit it. I feel like a huge bitch even saying it, but I just didn't give a fuck about anything for like three days straight. It wasn't even that I was necessarily depressed or uh, like angry or anything. I just didn't, I mean, you could call it depression, but I felt content and happy inside i just didn't give a shit this is so hard this is not the place to do this i'm gonna get a little bit of speed wrap this up and then we'll uh, reconvene at home get a couple energy drinks for tomorrow and a couple of sweet treats to curb the nicotine cravings and uh grumpiness coconut agave syrup fair trade cocoa powder Coconut oil, vanilla extract, Himalayan salt, oh, and almond flour. Almond's not great for me, but I don't give a shit. That's what I'm saying. I just don't give a shit. I'm gonna have a couple of uh, sweet treats and call it a night. Yeah, so just burned myself pretty good. And I wasn't too worried about it, but then it started getting a little bit hard around the outside and getting red and a bit swollen. So just minor uh, infection starting here. So going to, basically I created this poultice with no scientific evidence behind it whatsoever. Unless, I mean, there could be. I think it's a good idea, but it's just some organic raw honey, some activated charcoal and bentonite clay, 
and then one drop of oregano oil that's actually like 10 times diluted and fractionated coconut oil. And so I just put some things together that sounded uh, antibiotic-y and gonna put it on there like a poultice and, uh, well, I mean, not really like a poultice. We're gonna just put it on there as though it's actual antibiotic cream. And then we're going to put this bad boy on there. This is like a, I don't know, some sort of fucking padded band-aid thing that I got when I uh, had some other wound somewhere. But should be awesome, silicone. Don't know why I'm pointing that out. Um, all of that is irrelevant to everything. And yeah, that's just, I wanted to share my poultice idea just in case it worked well, um, you know, then this will be a great, you know, part of a little story, just an idea. And if it doesn't work and I get gangrene and I get my leg amputated, uh, you know, this will be at least an entertaining part of the next video about what it's like to, um, yeah, you know, lose a leg while paralyzed. But I don't foresee that happening. I think this is going to be some magic sauce for the old wound there. Oh, day 58. I really hope that I'm back. I hope that I have motivation. I have happiness. I have fucking not anger constantly as emotion. I can't believe how much um, this nicotine withdrawal will floor me. I just really did just not give a fuck. Felt like absolute shit. Just had no motivation. Massive carbs and carb and sweet cravings that I gave into. Had a little bit of wine, but maybe it was the right way because I managed to go with uh, without nicotine and am starting to feel better and over the hump of it. So who knows? I mean, if it works, it works. A little, you know, one step backward to make a whole leap forward and just abolish all, uh, you know, physical addictions. But, you know, I guess that's just how it has to be. I got my poultice on here. I'm poulticed up. This is the only way I could... Uh, Attach it on here, that stupid fluffy band-aid thing that I was using started to come off. So just co-flexed it onto my leg. And you're gonna see, yeah, gonna monitor that burn and see if we can't heal it up super quickly. What I'll do is I'll take a high dose vitamin C. This like a nice uh, methylated multivitamin for sure i'll take some collagen to like in addition to just eating a whole food delicious whole food diet getting plenty of sleep i will we'll take some extra collagen take some extra colostrum tomorrow sorry i can't i have a little bit of a stuffy nose from serving day i sound uh sound sick almost but i'm fine I'm not sick whatsoever um and I will also probably, oh, I'll do like 20 minutes of like the infrared light just directly on that spot. Well, you know, just spread, spread eagle and uh, yeah, get it on the taint and the nuts and the stomach and everywhere else. But as a byproduct, the spot with the burn, I found that infrared light, I have a juve infrared light. I feel like it actually does work miracles. For healing, I don't think that one's the placebo effect. Not sure about the supplementation, everything I do. Normally, like if this doesn't heal very quickly, um, I'll do like, I'll make like a homemade chicken broth and a homemade beef broth, like almost like a, almost like a stew, maybe even thicker than like a traditional broth, but I'll do bone, you know, a bone broth base. Um, to this kind of stew in the instant instant pot and I'll drink that with like super high dose um, bioavailable like natural vitamin C if I have an open wound like that because I think that really really facilitates the healing and after tonight I'm just have the poultice on there overnight to hopefully suck the infection out. That's the idea behind the activated charcoal, the bentonite clay, that one little drop of oregano oil is kind of an antibiotic. And the honey, supposedly antibacterial, 
as well and i've had good luck with wounds and honey in the in the past but yeah um we'll leave that on there for the night and then probably i'm going to sauna and shower in the morning so i'll take it all off and then put a new poultice on tomorrow i put that stuff in the fridge just that activated charcoal honey um oregano oil mixture i'll put a big dose of that on there another bandage keep it all closed up all day tomorrow and then i always take any wound that i have and t like once it's if it's not infected and if it's not like ripping it open too many times at night i'll leave it exposed and open to air at night so it can like dry out and kind of heal i just find it works way better um than leaving it bandaged all the time so i bandage it all day so it doesn't you know get ripped open or fucked with and then i leave it open all night if i can like even when i had like second degree burns well my hair looks i really look like someone that you should be taking advice about wound care um from with this hair i got going on but no seriously i um when i had like second degree burns all down my shins i even tried to do that i like set my leg up elevate it a little bit um infrared light it before bed and then you know leave it all open and exposed for a few hours throughout the night if i needed to move and stuff sometimes i'd wrap it up in the middle of the night if i was going to start flipping over laying my belly if my back hurt too bad or or whatever but i would just for the most part I was taking a shitload of uh, Xanax at the time, so I could probably just prop it up and just sleep the pain in one position. Um, but yeah, it uh, it's definitely the best luck that I've had with uh, healing wounds is giving them, you know, some time in the open air as long as they're not, you know, still super super deep or in the infection stage like once your body is like we've got this there's no shot of getting infection once like if you know there's no heat there's no swelling there's no evidence whatsoever like your body's not showing any evidence because if i have had cases in the past especially with like deep hand cuts or deep um cuts on the feet where you leave them exposed at night and they do they are more prone to infection that way yeah i had to keep them wrapped up 24 7 for longer than you would expect but i just think it's because of the depth of them this is a super shallow burn so i stick to stick to the leaving it open idea it's not a recommendation of some fucking dude laying his bed posting stuff on youtube uh with with zero credibility behind it just ideas d y o r do your own research but it works for me the red light and the high dose vitamin c uh bone broth stuff if you have wounds that that's fire i really do get behind that um the rest of it you know that's what you want to do your own research on but anyways, that's it. I'm going to hit uh, the bed. It's actually like 9.30-ish, maybe 9.45 now that I've been recording this. But I'm relatively on time. And my plan is to be back full force tomorrow. Um, I totally just lost three days of life with this quitting nicotine thing. I really, and I just want to be honest about it so people, you know, know um what they're in for and if they're anything like me like just give yourself some leeway like i wasn't trying to give myself leeway in advance i wasn't trying to like i wasn't i said like i'm just gonna quit it's gonna be easy no excuses but i mean i just had no drive no motivation what i think it is with nicotine is it is like a numbing agent of sorts or like it's such as all stimulus whatever drug you're using it's affecting um you know, your neurochemistry somehow, they all numb us to stuff. And I honestly think that it suppresses, somehow it suppresses emotion. Somehow or another, every time, like, you get done with a thought, I would throw in a zen and, like, have that little buzz. 
And somehow that just wasn't allowing like a complete work through of something. Cause as soon as I quit, or it could, you know, someone could know way more than me. This is, I'm just making this up. This is what it felt like. As soon as I quit, uh, you know, within 12, 14 hours of zero nicotine, I just had floods of emotions, negative emotions predominantly, but some, you know, it was just an up and down roller coaster of really intense emotions. I was sad, I was happy, I was angry, I was angry a lot, super angry. And yeah, there's definitely something to be said for what any addiction, when you break it, you just get this flood of emotional release because you've just, I've just spent so much time. Oh, inconvenient anxiety, put a zen in. Sad, you know, put a zen in and that kind of punctuates it and just adds this activity and lets you switch gears or do something else. I didn't never have thought about this before. I've never conceptualized this. I just was wondering where all of these emotions were coming from. Like why would stopping nicotine just suddenly make me experience like massive rushes of super intense emotions that weren't really correlated with what was going on around me or like, you know, they were, it didn't make sense. Like what was, I don't know, stimulating this. It, there was nothing happening that should have made me feel that way. So it's my theory, I'm sticking to it. I think there's something behind it. I think, you know, if anyone ever gave a shit enough or thought there'd be any real human value in figuring this out, if you did a double blind, like placebo controlled study, whatever, somehow, I think you would figure out at the end of that, that there is massive emotional suppression going on, even with nicotine or caffeine or sugar or like more benign addictions. I still think they are, you're only so addicted to them because it's a way of kind of just shutting off and emotion and processing through it. And that's why um, if you're a true addict, like I am with things where, you know, I was doing nicotine constantly. I mean, just nonstop every, not every waking moment, but nearly every waking moment. It was like switching one pouch to another. I keep them in for a long time, so they kind of run out, um, but it's still like a constant drip feed of nicotine and, I was definitely, you know, at the time, I thought I was just doing it because I liked the mental boost. And I, of course, there's some positive justification. You wouldn't just do something like that all day, every day. If you hadn't fucking constructed some bullshit inside your mind that allows you to make that choice fucking 15 times a day. But the real answer to it is I was definitely doing it in order to, yeah, just cut off... Um, negative emotions, whether it's boredom, anxiety, fear, uh, you know, just dislike of my job, whatever it was, any, you know, frustration, anything inconvenient feeling, I could just go to that addiction. And it was not like the addiction gets rid of the feeling per se. It just routes my brain, like my brain's going down the pathway of like, Oh, I fucking hate my job. I'm sad. And it's going down that pathway. And rather than continuing that thought and branching into a whole neural network of why am I sad about this? What can I do about it? How can I solve it? Blah, 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 blah. It's just like, and it just reroutes to this addiction pathway and just takes you a whole another direction. You're able to switch off and ignore the inconvenient truth. At least that's my best assessment of it. But yeah, definitely sucks ass for um, a couple days, but I feel much better now. I had, I do have to say this, because I do want to be transparent and honest and like anyone who's thinking of quitting nicotine or any other addiction, want them to like know exactly what to expect and um you know, the best way to do that is just listen to other people's experiences. One fucking thing I did have is today I had like 
an insatiable need for I would have taken Aunt Jemima's like just straight Aunt Jemima syrup syrup Jesus I can't fucking speak syrup and like put a funnel in my mouth and just funnel fed myself syrup I wanted sweets so bad me and Kelsey went to Whole Foods got um you know relatively healthy sweets but some chocolates and some just some bullshit um super high sugar stuff and I just pounded like quite a bit of sugar and it just had to be done there was it didn't matter what I wanted what my justification was my brain was like as soon as that opportunity was presented it was in auto drive it took over and it was like we need a crutch we need a vice we need something you have to divert whatever this craving or desire is for nicotine you gotta transfer it to something else for just a little bit of time so i yeah i did that with sugar um don't obviously don't think it was the most optimal choice or the best thing i'm not suggesting that it was uh what someone else should do. I'm sure there'll be more kind of addictive cravings and consequences. And like, now I'm going to have to really be mindful and super vigilant on not transferring that addiction from nicotine to sugar. Cause that is totally possible for me. I'm a complete lover of sweets. It's super hard for me to eat like carnivore or keto or, you know, just high protein, high fat, low carb. I don't really eat low, low carb. I eat a lot of fruit, but I want to eat candy all day, every day, cakes, sweets, donuts. Like, I love that shit. Chocolate milk. Um, it just doesn't, doesn't serve me at all mentally. And also just, uh, I have a princess gut and it would just nuke my stomach. Like, I, the, my stomach's definitely going to be pretty fucking nuked tomorrow from the weird concoctions of shit that I put in today. I'm just telling you, I just did not give a shit. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't care. Whatever part of my brain is super driven and determined to be better and, you know, whatever all these fucking things are that I make important in my life, whatever part of my brain wants all that, just didn't give a shit the last three days. So that's a huge motivating factor for quitting nicotine and letting that go and out of my life forever because it clearly had some level of control of my brain and body. Because as I removed it, I removed it and everything that's mo like most important to me and on a, not even that's most important to me, all the short term term goals that are most important to me um just obliterated god there's they could not care less about any of them and so i assume that's just because it's i had a hijacked dopamine system from i don't actually know how nicotine acts in your brain i could not know less about it to be honest um but as it feels certainly like it's acting on the dopamine system and based on uh, my love of things that increase dopamine i would have to imagine that's the case and yeah i assume that it's just been hijacked and so i'm just not getting the satisfaction from life and things and whatever i'm not getting that dopamine motivation but that's all going to change tomorrow no fucking excuses I'm behind on my pull-ups by enough that it's going to be a gnarly morning to catch them all up. But I love the tallies because I'm going to get rid of every single one of those tallies. Eat by the date that's prescribed on there, even if it means doing a shitload of pull-ups, you know, all on one day or whatever. The tallies will go and get a sauna in, get to work, make some money. And yeah, just get back after. I have so much shit to do. I completely have outlined um, this fiction novel that I hope to finish pretty quickly. I just need to make the time and edit it and get it all together. And, you know, even if it's just 20 minutes a day, I got to get that done because I've been 
conceptualizing it for years, years, and I've written it twice, basically, and it just was incomplete. It sucked ass. I mean, it was a good story, but it just, it didn't have an ending. It didn't have the ending it needed, the bullshit ending, and it just was missing the, it was missing everything about the character arc. It was just wrong. It was there, but it was just, it was shit. It was wrong. And now it's done. It's completed, conceptualized. I just have to tie the bow on it. Don't know where I was going with that. The thing, that was just out loud thoughts. That probably was unnecessary to share. Um, but I'm pretty out of it. And I'm going to go to sleep now. And bid you a farewell. Uh, so I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit retarded right now. I ate a small amount of a weed edible earlier, or did I? No, I didn't. That's a complete lie. I ate a little bit of a weed edible last night, and then I smoked a little bit of a weed vape tonight just to uh, take the edge off and I thought it would help me get some sleep, but it just gave me a little bit of anxiety and made me feel super dumb and think about a bunch of weird stuff. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm such a, I, I used to really enjoy cannabis, but I'm, it's not, it doesn't, uh, I barely did it. I did like a little tiny, tiny bit of it. And yeah, just a little bit of latent anxiety and just made me feel stupid. It used to make me funny, creative, excited. Maybe it would do that if I was like, you know, listen to the right music and to the right vibe, but it certainly didn't do that tonight. Um, but if this was weird. I just wanted that to be out there, you know, because I'm definitely not, I'm lazy when it comes to editing. I'm not going to watch this again before I just add it to the end of one of the videos. And so I'm not going to review or know from a not um, slightly slightly intoxicated perspective. I'm not going to know what uh, what it was like. So I just, yeah, I want to throw that out there. Just make it, uh, you know, make it known. But I love you guys. Thank you if you made it this far for listening to, you know, I'm going to talk about the poultice, my fucking activated charcoal poultice. I'm going to get some sleep. It's back on track tomorrow. I wasted three days of my life fucking around to do this stupid nicotine thing. Let's, let's get back after it. Let's fucking go. Good night.